Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is Montana This Morning from Montana's News Leader. Good morning and thank you for starting your day with us. I'm Justine Stewart. And I'm Louis Storch. Hope you're having a great start to your Tuesday. Justine, almost Thanksgiving. We're getting there. Getting, getting, getting there. A lot of holiday travel too. Yes. Well, you getting know, I was, roadways. yeah, I was uh, reading yesterday, AAA, you know, they always put mm -hmm. out their Thanksgiving travel and they say that this year looks like it's going to be the highest travel number since like 2005. Oh, wow. Yeah, so a lot of people hitting the roads. The good news about that for us here, at least as far as weather goes, is we're going to see rain, but it's going to be so warm. We're not talking about any snow, really. So That's I good. don't think it really should have too much an impact if you are planning on traveling as we roll throughout the, uh, or at least for tomorrow and into Thanksgiving. Now, if you are doing some travel this morning, uh, you might want to take yourself or give yourself a little extra time because we do have a dense fog advisory in place. That's to 11 a.m. this morning. And then because of the rain we saw yesterday, now temperatures have dropped below freezing. We're also going to get some ice and black ice out there. And then with this fog, we could get some freezing fog. So definitely take it easy on those roads this morning. Again, this is going to last until 11. 11 a.m. Uh, this morning. Forecast headlines it says atmospheric river is going to continue. So rain showers again in the forecast for today. Like I just mentioned, though, above average temperatures with highs in the 50s by midweek. One change to your Thanksgiving forecast yesterday. It looked like it's going to be dry today. That system is going to arrive a little bit earlier. So we're going to see rain on Thanksgiving. We'll have those details coming up. The Grizz looking for a new head coach for the fourth time in nine seasons. This after the University of Montana announced that Bob Stitt has coached his final game for the team. UM's athletic director made that announcement at a press conference. Stitt came to UM after 15 successful seasons at the Colorado School of Mines. He went 21 to 14 in three seasons with the Grizz and 14 to 10 in Big Sky Conference play. Montana lost to Montana State for the second straight time on Saturday, missing out on the FCS playoffs for a second straight year. Haslam made the clear decision that it was not a knee-jerk reaction to another loss against the rival Bobcats. I hate to tag it to one game. I understand that's a big game. I completely get that. Uh, but like I said, you know, the evaluation process had started, uh, you know, really last year, at the tail end of last year, and then all through the, all through this year. Haslam said the search for a new coach begins immediately. Our Valley County jury found former Florence doctor Chris Christensen guilty of 22 felony charges, including the deaths of two people. The former Florence doctor was on trial for two counts of negligent homicide, nine counts of criminal endangerment, and 11 counts of criminal distribution of dangerous drugs, all felony charges. The jury received the case after closing arguments Thursday afternoon after hearing a flood of detailed testimony from both sides over the course of several weeks. They deliberated for over 12 hours until reaching Monday's verdict. Christensen is facing up to 405 years in prison when he's sentenced December 27th in Hamilton. When Governor Steve Bullock addressed the Zero Suicide Conference in Helena this fall, he said he often feels like the consoler in chief since he has attended so many funerals of people who've chosen to end their own lives. Many of them were young Native Americans. Jill Valley goes on special assignment to hear what it's going to take to save the lives on the state's reservations. Scroll through Josiah Nichols' Facebook page and you'll see a teenager who loves his family, has a great head of hair, is a basketball player for Two Eagle River School, a talented Native singer, and someone who has scores of friends. Many of those friends filled the hallways of the hospital the night Josiah decided to die by suicide. I don't know exactly what happened that day. I just remember my phone call, getting my phone call. And I was crying and I was shaking. It was his face, so I tried to call him. His phone just rang and rang and rang. A week before his death, he posted this on Facebook. They were words of despair. They were followed by words of love and support from his friends, but it did not change what was about to happen. My baby was laying there. My heart. I could feel it shattered all I wanted. It was my baby. I just wanted him to open his eyes. Josiah was just 16 years old. 
His death was one of 20 confirmed suicides in the Mission Valley community since last November. There's no statistic pointing to how many were attempted. Montana's Native Americans have the highest rate of suicide in a state that already has one of the highest rates in the country. I'm in part haunted by what you're here to work on. Last month, Governor Steve Bullock launched the Zero Suicide Academy. It's a major component of a statewide plan to reduce suicides. The goal here is to share ideas that people can take back and put to use in their own communities to examine what's happening on their own reservations. There are no easy answers, but the conversation is well underway. Suicide isn't something that you can address and it's gonna go away. It's a symptom of much bigger issues. And so what we wanna think about is what else do we need to do? Who do we need to pull together? What have other tribes done that have helped them address this as a key issue of wellness across Indian country? Suicide is also a topic that's now talked about openly in schools because it has to be. We've taken an open stance as far as it's not something that should be pushed behind or not talked about when somebody comes up um, or has a, uh, questions or it comes up in class. It's something that we have agreed as a staff to discuss or maybe not there um, at a different time with, with those students. It's an issue that affects young people deeply as they watch their peers and friends struggle. Many believe suicide has become a bigger issue than bullying. After several suicides in the Mission Valley last spring, the student leaders of St. Ignatius High School went to their teachers and said they want training to know what to do if they have a classmate in crisis, because they know often a young person contemplating suicide will reach out to their peers before their parents. It'd be nice to know what to do in that situation. So that's why we want like the leaders in our groups to be trained in something so that way when their friends do reach out or people do reach out to them they do know how to handle it the right way. There's no one reason why someone might choose to end their life. For Native Americans, tribal leaders say the answer to their pain cannot be suicide. That pain needs a voice. While this is a really sad time for us, um, it is also an opportunity for us to really put a mark in the sand and do business differently. We are really saying that we need to figure out a different way of addressing our issues, issues that have gone back for generations. Sherry often reads the note her son left behind, searching for answers that just aren't there. She can still see his face in photos, hear his voice singing back at her on an iPad, but it's not the same. I don't get to see him anymore. I still wait up for him. And I know he's not going to come home. On special assignment, Jill Valley, MTN News. If you are in crisis, you can text the number 741741 and type in MT for a free 24-7 text line. Well, Thanksgiving just a few days away, and with that comes a popular way to cook your turkey, frying it. Montana fire rescue crews hope that this demonstration will help people realize the dangers of frying a turkey. You can see that just in seconds that turkey fully engulfed in flames and causing an explosion. What many people do not realize is that putting a frozen turkey into a fryer is like putting water into a grease fire. When water turns to steam, it expands to 1700 times its volume. Okay, so when you put water in oil, that water immediately boils, expands 1,700 times, and blows that oil into small particles. So that's essentially what's happening with uh, pouring water on a grease fire, or in this case, putting uh, a turkey, a frozen turkey in water. That water is expanding 1,700 times, blowing that grease out, and then causing it to ignite. So always make sure your turkey is fully thawed, and don't fry the turkey near a building. All right, we're going to send on over to Lewis now. He's standing by with his forecast. I thank you, Justine. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a good start to your Tuesday. Temperatures mostly in the 20s and 30s waking up this morning. So, yeah, grab those jackets before you head out the door. We're not seeing any rain showers, at least yet. Those will come later on today. But for the most part, we are going to stay dry this morning. 28 Missoula, 35 in Hamilton, 36 Polson, 33 in Kalispell, 27 
waking up this morning in Phillipsburg. So let's go ahead and time out everything what we can expect for today using our future track satellite and radar clouds in fog this morning. Now we are going to see some clearing, but because of the fog that's out there with the dense fog advisory, that's why uh, the sunshine is going to be hard to come by today because as the fog clears out, notice the clouds will be increasing by the afternoon from west to east as these rain showers begin to develop. They're not going to reach us until late afternoon and evening, but they will hit northern Idaho and northwestern Montana first. And I just want to point this out to you again. Notice this is where the heaviest rain is going to be along the border here at the Montana and Idaho border in northwestern Montana. There's places like Libby, Thompson Falls, Trout Creek, and then in northern Idaho with more light and scattered showers the further east you go for today. Now we are going to keep those scattered showers in the forecast for tomorrow morning. We stop this at 2.30 a.m. Again, notice again Wednesday morning, 10.30, that heaviest rain is going to be in northern Idaho and along the Montana and Idaho border with more light scattered showers for the rest of western Montana. Another system on Thanksgiving though, that's when we're going to see the more widespread showers moving in, affecting most of western Montana. It's going to start early Thanksgiving here in northern Idaho and northwestern Montana by around 12 p.m. and then slowly slide south throughout the day. So yesterday we were thinking Thanksgiving was going to be dry and we we're going to hold this off until late Thursday night to Friday. This morning as new information is coming in, that's picking up speed a little bit. So that's why I expect really a wet day, especially in the afternoon on Thanksgiving. I just wanted to show you this real quick, your future track satellite in rain. This is for the next two days. So we'll stop this Thursday morning, Thanksgiving morning. And just again, notice North, Northern Idaho, pick up over an inch of rain, much lighter amounts the further east you go. Here's your seven day forecast for today. 42 with some scattered showers this afternoon in Missoula. 50s though, how about 50s Wednesday and Thursday with those rain showers still sticking around. Kalispell 41 today, 49 tomorrow, 52 on Thanksgiving in Hamilton. We'll see 45 today, 50s in rain showers for Thanksgiving. All right, well, thanks, Lewis, and stick around. We'll be right back. First, here are some birthdays for you this morning.